All right, Lauren, thank you. This week, we want to get you prepared for winter double over. Uh, now is the time to start thinking about keeping your house safe during the winter months. From the space heaters to Christmas trees, there's a lot to keep in mind when it comes to winter in your home. Damien Lotus joining us live with more from his house. Good morning, Damien. You didn't have to go far for work today. <laughs> That's right, Lacey. Good morning. So every morning we are fortunate enough to have our viewers welcome us into their home. So today I'm welcoming you into my home and joining me right now is Assistant Fire Marshal Darren Sigmund. So Darren, we've talked a lot about how to winterize your house and keep yourself safe here for winter as it approaches because as the temperatures go down, the chance of fires goes up. So what we're going to talk about specifically today is how to drip your faucets in the event of cold weather because normally the rule of thumb is once those temperatures go below 20, that's normally the rule of thumb we use to start dripping your faucets, which we didn't know this about, Darren, but you're also a former plumber. That's correct. So you're like the perfect person to talk to us about this. So give <laughs> us some tips on what we need to know about dripping our faucets. I hope so. Thank you for having me this morning. So uh, with winterizing your faucets and your home, you want to drip the faucet just about this speed. And what we're doing is we're, when, you, when you drip your faucet in the center of the house at your kitchen, you're dripping it at a, at a pace that allows the water meter to flow. So water that's flowing inside your meter or your pipes does not freeze typically. So that's why we're flowing at this rate. When you, when you flow water in the center of your house, uh, it's the longest home run in your home and it moves the most water. You don't typically have to, to drip every single faucet. So when you do the one in the kitchen, it definitely is the longest run and allows you to keep from freezing the main. Before you leave on vacation, make sure that uh, you, you shut off your meter because if you do have a problem with freezing and it, and it has an issue and it's really cold, you want to make sure your meter shut off so the house doesn't flood. Something like that is, is uh, key. Which I didn't know that. I always thought it had to be the outside faucets that you had to drip. But yeah, the one that makes sense. So the one that has the farthest to go is the one that you want the most water flow to go through. So that makes perfect sense. So as Thanksgiving's approaching, the other thing we need to talk about, and this might be the most important thing for our viewers, is <clears throat> how to properly cook a turkey if you're going to fry it here. Because you were telling me that turkey fryers are the number one cause of fires here for, uh, Thanksgiving. for Thanksgiving. That's correct. All right, so go ahead and tell us how to do it properly. Yes, yes sir, absolutely. Um, turkey fryers are used during Thanksgiving and the number one cause of fires. So what we'd like to talk about is uh, when, you, when you get ready, the, the temperature for turkey fryers is about 350 degrees. That's about the mark you want to hit. Too hot, too much hotter than that, and you could burn the turkey. So uh, first we want to talk about before you start cooking. You want to make sure that you don't use your turkey fryer in the garage or on your veranda or your deck. You want to keep that turkey fryer 10 feet from your house. Mm -hmm. So that gives you that room. If it does have a problem, you don't start a fire. Yeah. Also, uh, we want to make sure that uh, when you start to cook, the first thing we want you to do is take your turkey and put it inside the fryer and pour water inside, no oil. And that way you see the level and you see the level that's safe without the oil or the water coming out. Once you're done with that, take the turkey out, dump the water out. Now you're safe to put your oil inside that vat. And now you know the height or the level of your oil. So that when you turn it on, as the oil gets hot, it doesn't come out of the vat and hit the, the fire underneath that flame. If it hits that flame, it will cause a fire and start the house or the structure on fire. That's close and you don't want to do that. Also, a rule of thumb for turkeys are every five pounds of turkey, you want to thaw it out for 24 hours. So if you had a 10 pound turkey, you want to thaw it for two days or 48 hours. It's super important that they're thawed because if they're not thawed, it has too much water and you'll put it inside that vat and it will explode and then create a fire and go over the sides of that vat and hit the flame. Yeah, we've all seen those videos of people putting in those frozen turkeys and it just explodes, right? That's so we right. definitely want to avoid that happening. So there we go. So very good for that. So today we are going to be talking about some cooler weather, but not today. It's going to be coming here as we head into the weekend. But for today, grab those umbrellas here as you're heading out the door for that bus stop forecast. We will see temperatures today making it into the 70s, so it's going to feel nice. But we are going to be tracking some showers and thunderstorms as we head into this afternoon and into this evening. And meteorologist Emily Sutton will have the latest on that coming up in just a bit. But in the meantime, Lacey, we're reporting live here at my house here in Moore. Meteorologist Damien Lotus, Oklahoma's News 4. All right. Thank you, Damien. And great tips right there. Wow. I learned so much. Coming up on Rise and